Hi, this is Nicole Kupchik and this is 10 Minute Tidbits. Today, I'm here with Joel Green. And we are going to chat about SCD, sequential compression devices, or pneumatic compression IPCs, devices. IPCs, yes. What, what's the new term now? Uh, what is it? I think it's IPC is the other IPCs. name. IPCs? Intermittent Pneumatic Compression Device. Yeah. Same I'm, thing. So yeah. I'm probably, some, am I solving old school? No, uh, sometimes I wonder the other thing is older, but yeah. <laughs> so Who anyway. knows? All right, yes. so how many of you out there have ever had a patient on SCDs? We all have. Yep. Where do your patients' SCDs end up most of the time? Uh, they end up on the ankle, <laughs> around the end of the bed. Around the end of the bed, on right? On the floor, um, under the bed. Yeah. Um, or they're on but not plugged in. Okay. Yep. Or so, the hose isn't connected, or yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about the effectiveness. So we're gonna chat just really quickly about a study that was very recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine. I, this is an absolutely, just a, a fascinating study. So this study included um, over 2,000 patients. Um, and what happened, so if you can imagine, okay, so this is how it was set up. Everybody is on some sort of a pharmacologic DVT prophylaxis, so be that heparin or low molecular weight heparin, everyone's on something, right. okay? Then one group got SCDs, the other group didn't. Good. Is there any advantage to adding SCDs if you are on pharmacologic DVT prophylaxis? What do you think, Joel? Well, I know the answer. <laughs> I was Joel knows originally the answer, okay. I would say you read no. the study. Okay. Yeah, originally I would say no that that they would need the SCDs also. But after reading the study, I changed my mind. Yeah. Uh, data shows otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. So there doesn't seem to be any benefit when patients are already on pharmacologic uh, DVT prophylaxis to add SCDs. Now, what what's one of the first things you want to know with SC? Like, if you're doing a study on SCDs, okay. what do you want to know? For me, I would say the compliance rate with the SCDs is totally. the number, number one thing I want to know. And guess what? In this study, they had SCDs on on average 22 hours out of the day. Yeah. Who ever has SCDs on 22 hours? No. Have you ever had it? Not no. unless they're like paralyzed and intubated, sedated. And, like we're yeah. just not moving them, right? right? Yeah. You're so, an arts patient, you might have them on 22 hours. Right? Otherwise, no. So 22 hours out yeah. of the day, That's I'd say that's some pretty darn good compliance. They also had some compliance champions too though, when you read yeah. the study. There was yeah. a lot of people going around saying, hey, are your SCDs on? Yeah, you know, got reminders so I think that's it, very right? helpful in reminding people to do that. Yeah, so. and so the primary outcome was they evaluated the incidence of any new proximal lower limb DVT, mm -hmm. and what they did was twice a week they would use ultrasound on the lower extremities to identify um, any new DVT. They started this about the third day after admission, or I'm sorry, after randomization, and then um, and they continued the ultrasound until ICU discharge, till the patient died, or till they were fully mobile, or until trial day 28. Whatever came first, they would do these um, ultrasounds, and 991 patients received the pneumatic compression device, and then 1,012 received um, just pharmacologic, but everyone yeah. got pharmacologic. Right. And again, these were applied for a median of 22 hours mm -hmm. for seven days. Yeah. So that's, a, that's a pretty decent compliance. And um, and so when you looked at the primary outcome, 3.9%, um, so DVT was experienced in 3.9% in the SCD group and 4.1% in the control group, and it was not statistically significant. Right. And that's Fascinating. The, yeah. And that's out of 2,000 patients, 3% and 4%. Yeah. So yeah, you're so, looking at very low incidence in both of yeah. these patients. So I don't, you know, what's the takeaway from this? That it's a waste of time and money if you're already yeah. on pharmacological. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. Yeah. SCDs, you know, I'm sure the companies that make SCDs are. Oh yeah. Probably. Not They're happy. not happy about this study at <laughs> yeah. all. Um, yeah. Because you'll see. I don't even know who makes SCDs. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, there's different kinds. You see just the calf ones, you see the thigh ones, you see the full leg ones. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different talks in the study about, you know, the type of sequential, like if it goes up the leg or down the leg, does it trap pooling blood? Yeah. There was all of those kinds of discussions in the study. Um, these ones in the study, I think, were all calf-based, if I remember Most right. of them, yeah. yeah. Most of them were calf. Uh, calf length. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, again, one of the things I would say be careful about, because I really figured this out as a, when I was a CNS, um, is that, 
we all are like, hey, is your patient on DVT prophylaxis? You're like, yeah, of course they are. But really, when you look at compliance with DVT prophylaxis, that's quite another thing. Right. So I would say just be careful and make sure indeed your patient is on some sort of pharmacologic. Yeah, yeah for sure DVT the pharmacologic and then decide if they can't do pharmacology, then maybe the STDs is the right route for you. Yeah, I mean, it's a definite or alternative. Or mobility is also the right route ah, for you Yes, as well. get them up yeah. and get them moving, yeah. right? Yeah, and you know, one of the other things I just want to throw out there, um, you know, I, I think DVTs are scary things for yeah. patients. And um, but and I think in hospitals sometimes we're just like, oh, you know, a DVT, no big deal. It's a really big deal when somebody mm -hmm. has a DVT. Yeah. Uh, but one thing to always keep in mind, if you ever have a patient that's got a DVT that gets short of breath, what's the number one thing you got to think? Definitely go for the PE. Yeah, you've got to think PE in these patients. And anytime you have somebody that has an arrest, you w number one reason you've got to just go there is D is PE. You know, is this patient experiencing a, a pulmonary embolism? Did you know that for every one PE we identify in the hospital, we find two point five post mortem. Oh, I don't doubt that. Yeah, it's we. Yeah. It, it, they, they call it the silent killer right. because we miss a lot of pulmonary embolisms mm -hmm. in the hospital. And because you think about a DVT, a DVT is venous, right? right? So if you have something that travels on the venous side, where does it go? It's gonna go to the lungs. Yeah, so it's gonna go to the right side of the heart and the lungs. And so anytime you've got somebody who gets short of breath who's got a DVT, think PE right. immediately. So I don't know, so kind of some interesting takeaways. Yeah. I would be wanting to do a trade-off though. We will trade you these STDs right. for some new equipment. New, Give me something yeah, new, yeah, right? Something you new, know, something better, exactly. Yeah, I would want some stroke volume yeah. optimization equipment right. myself. Yes, definitely. You know, what would you want to purchase uh, by all the money you might save on the STDs? the coolest thing this the other day is, is they it? have the staff chairs that fully recline flat so they're like your wheelie chairs in the uh, office space and then they have a piece that kicks out and reclines flat for nurses i'm like that'd be fabulous oh in your break room yeah. just at the nurse's station too oh my <laughs> nurse's station yeah. does it have a massager in it it does not oh but at I, least you i'd say give a massager yeah. Right? so yeah Oh, I love that. Yeah, so yeah, cool. so really interesting study. We will put a link to the study in the show notes. And if you're not able to get it, just pop me an email and cupchick at gmail.com. And I'd happily send you this paper. And again, you know, this was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is like creme de la creme for peer reviewed yeah. uh, journals. So, all right. Anything else you'd like to add? Okay. Well, I'm Nicole Cupchick. I'm Joel Green. And this is 10 Minute Tidbits.